By the way, I'm Neil <coughs> Smell. I think I know pretty much everybody in this room or, or, or met you before. I'm the associate dean from the Honors College. And, um, and it was actually in my class that Matt and Stephanie met. <laughs> you brought the magic. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> no, I thought well, that that was directed at me. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so I, I'll just sort of um, point to people, and and uh, and you can uh, you can ask a question of a particular person because now you have a sense of what they're doing. You may have particular questions for particular people, but um, but also just general questions, which will sort of you can throw on the whole panel, and they'll sort of take turns answering. And um, so we'll, we'll and I'll just recognize people out in the audience, and otherwise sort of keep my mouth shut. So. <laughs> no, the first one's always the toughest. Yes. Um, for, for everybody, how important did you feel that your senior project was for your thesis project in your search for employment? So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the question because I'm like into the thing. So um, how the question is how important was the senior project, the senior thesis, to what they're doing now? Is that right? Take it away. Who wants to? Oh. For me, it was it was hugely important because um, applying to the Teach for America program, like leadership is important and everything like that. But having had experience actually working in a charter school um, at, with their school gardening program, I think that was huge. Um, and just showing that I had already taken some time to think about um, education and sort of the system in the country and how we were fitting some of those alternative programs in. So for me, and then it also helped me decide that that was something I was interested in doing. So I think it was definitely a big step for me. Uh, for me as well, um, I think it was very important to me, both my, uh, the marketing internship that I was in uh, my first year and also the position that I'm in now are both very much tied to social media. And I think that my thesis was uh, very helpful in getting me those positions. I am not employed. I'm in medical school. so But it did help during my interview process. A lot of times they'll ask you during the interview what research you did when you were an undergrad. And since I did mine in the medical field, it did help during the interview. So, helped a lot. Um, being in academia, it was pretty much what got me there. I needed to show that I could do qualitative research. And um, by submitting another chapter of my thesis, I actually received a department assistantship. So, um, I'm fully funded be, um, for the next five years because of the research I did here at UVM. Yeah, they can go to school for free. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like my thesis is always evolving and expanding. It's it, be, it was an extension of stuff that I had already done, classes I had already taken at UVM, and my Fulbright proposal is really a spin-off of my thesis, and it's exploring my research question from my thesis in greater depth. So it, it was huge. I, I can't say that the specific topic my thesis was on played as much of a role because I'm not doing you know, international expansion, I'm not doing marketing, I'm not doing strategy, it's not what I do with my company. And given the nature of the business world, I can't imagine anyone actually read it because you know, people, it's fairly hard enough to get people to respond to your email, much less read like a 35 page document, something they may or may not care about. So I think the fact that I wrote it though was important to them to show that I was able to do those sorts of projects, able to put together that sort of analysis and that kind of research. So I do everything that helped during the interview process, if not for the actual topic of the thesis. What do you think? Well, let's go a little deeper with that. What do you think? just sort of the process of actually writing a thesis. So not even exactly what it was on, but just sort of the whole process of think, you know, conceiving a topic and sort of seeing it through a proposal stage. And are there things that you gain from that, um, you know, just outside of the kind of specifics of the topic that, that you think w was valuable or, or, or was it just stressful? <laughs> what I think helped when I did it, I mean, I know a lot of people were doing it and they were really stressed out, and I know it's because a lot of them, I don't think, picked a topic they were particularly interested in, whereas I picked a topic I was very, very interested in, so I really didn't feel stressed out during it, and I really liked my, the time I did spend with it, so I feel like that helps a lot with the stress level of writing a thesis. I'd have to say my stress level was pretty high, even though I really enjoyed the topic. <laughs> the process was grueling, but that could also have been since it was my time was also very much condensed. But the process was extremely rewarding, especially when you hand it in, you finished your defense, and it was it, you learned so much about yourself and 
kind of leave with this can-do attitude, like, wow, I just put that together, and that that's pretty awesome. So it kind of it, it sets you up for your next your next um, your next step out of UVM, kind of with a a sense of achievement at the end. Because a lot of students don't write a thesis and they feel like, okay, it's over. And there's, I mean, I have all sorts of different papers from various classes, but I don't have a final product that I can kind of feel really, really good about. So. I think for me, uh, the position that I'm in now, building this, uh, this online community, it really came out of a workshop that my supervisor went to once where she learned the word social media and sort of decided, oh, that would be really cool, and decided to get a position to build something. And so she doesn't really know anything about what it is or what it entails or what, how the best way to go about this would be. So she sort of said, you know, have at it. So the, having that experience of starting from an idea, building it into a project, following it through has been uh, tremendously helpful in developing a project plan, developing a timeline. Um, I think that that's, those are definitely good skills that I'm able to fall back on now. Yeah, for me, um, I found it really useful in, um, I, I got both positive and, um, I mean, what not to do in my future research papers kind of under my belt. I felt like I had such a, um, such good support from my mentors here that I could, I could flounder a little bit while I was writing my thesis and I learned a lot about how to structure a research paper, what kind, um, how to know when sources aren't good and you just shouldn't keep reading because you're wasting your time. Um, I learned a lot of um, how to organize my thoughts um, in a cohesive way, and hopefully it's armed me for future research papers. I think sort of because mine, I mean, I wrote a very long piece and I did a lot of research, but a lot of my research was more um, with talking to people and sort of navigating the school systems, talking to principals, calling schools, um, talking to staff members at the gardening program. I think that was a really valuable experience for me too because I think um, when you first come out of college, having that confidence in the workplace and in um, you know just working with people and talking to new people and making a name for yourself in there, I think that was a really good experience for me to get comfortable um, in that sort of setting. So I, the research side was helpful, but I think also just sort of the the project experience was really helpful too. Go ahead. You were all uh, very highly focused and motivated individuals and obviously academically adept. Mm -hmm. What about work-life balance? Um, outside of class, outside of work, things that you did to just explore fun stuff. So the question is about work-life balance, and are you thinking at UVM and outside of UVM, or are you oh, thinking starting, specific, at UVM, starting at UVM? You, know, you get here and it's you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're immersed, but there's an awful lot of stuff going on at the periphery that's not you know in your academic focus. That's Great question. Very interesting. Yeah. Good question. Well, if, given that summer that winter dominates most of the school year here and I'm an avid skier that took up a large portion of my time <laughs> so I'd say I mean going to UVM it's the kind of people who get to go here tend to be more you know outdoorsy kind of people so you know I spent a lot of time just like skiing you know playing basketball I started working out when I first came to UVM it was just that kind of culture here so I can't say I did a lot of like extracurricular activities and things like that but I tried to sp I tried to get out and do as much as I could, and you know spend time with some of my friends. You know, Red Rocks is a pl place you can go swimming and like jump off cliffs, which you probably don't hear about <laughs> in the summer when it's warm. And so I mean, there's just a lot to do outside here. I mean, that's really where I, I'd say I spent most of my time. And you know, even in the, even when it's cold, if you can if you like skiing, you can still be outside. So. And I think I have to, that's where I would make a plug for the honors college because the nice thing is that that sort of blended the work and the social life because. We were living with people that we were taking classes with, and that we did a lot of academic things together. Um, but we also did a lot of social things together, and so it was re it really blended very nicely. And that we always had, even if we were talking about something academic, it didn't have to be work necessarily. And so that that was really helpful for me in getting that balance. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? I would just ditto what he said. I play a lot of basketball. There's plenty of time to go skiing. Um, I think it's important that the students make time for themselves or else it's going to be very stressful and not fun, so enjoy it. I do think she's right, though, that the honors living situation helps add to it. Cause, I mean, we, we started living in the honors dorms in Millis way back before the, 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 the actual honors dorms were finished. 
the uh, U Heights. And I lived, my, I lived until through senior year with my next door neighbor and kids I lived on the floor with. I mean, it was honest college people the entire time that I was at UVM. And, you know, to be able to meet friends and meet your roommate who you live with freshman year and A, not hate them and B, be able to live with them for the next four years and enjoy it and still be friends afterwards, I think is pretty remarkable. So the fact that they, I think they blend a good group of people even for living situations. And, you know, as long as you don't get tired of each other through class and all that, then, you know, it works out quite well. Yeah, I had a similar experience. Uh, the grab bag dorm uh, friends that I made freshman year are the best friends I've ever made. And fortunately, they don't share my research interests. So it's a nice break to like go and not have to talk about school and, I don't know, just kind of let everything go for a little while. And I mean, they're friends that you have for life. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So the question is about the transition from college to work and especially that last spring um, before you graduate, what, what that was like and how it felt, what you were doing. Um, I just graduated this spring, and the transition, the, the spring was wonderful. It was a really, really great semester. I think part of it was I was just gone for six months, so it was really great to be back. And I just tried to take in everything. And now that I'm back, coming back up to Burlington, I wish I was had another semester or several left. But um, it, was, it was difficult having to say goodbye to people that you've been with for four years, but most people at least with internet and Skype, there it's easy to keep in touch with. And it's amazing that the contacts you meet at UVM are, I mean, some of my friends are just around the states and around the world. So it's, it's pretty cool to see them going off in their own separate ways, but be able to also find, still find common interests and talk about those. I lived at home the, the entire summer and really enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't been home for that much time since high school. and. It was wonderful. I'm starting to go a little crazy right now, and I'm ready to leave. But it was really a great, uh, a great way to spend the summer in Vermont. So, um, I stayed in Burlington for a year after I graduated. I graduated in '08, um, right when the economy got really bad. So I came armed with my double bachelor's, and I couldn't find work anywhere. I ended up working um, in a bank for a year, but during that time, um, since my work wasn't super demanding, I had time to polish my grad school applications. I sent out eight applications, which was really, um, really time consuming. Also, I got involved um, with the Vermont Refugee Resettlement Program, tutoring um, families who needed help with English and literacy skills, so I was able to um, spend some of my time doing what I'm interested in, and then school happened, and I haven't had a minute to myself since. <laughs> you also got married. Oh, yeah, I got married, too, um, to a fellow UVMer, so it's pretty cool. <laughs>